Hi and welcome back to our series of videos, videos on food chemistry. Today we're going to be looking at vitamins and how they relate to the different biomolecules that we've been studying so far. So the key things that VCA wants us to understand is that humans don't have the ability to synthesize most vitamins except for vitamin D and that's catalyzed by sunlight which we'll talk a little bit more about very shortly and this makes them essential in our dietary requirements we need to take them in from food externally from our body we also need to be able to compare structural features of vitamin C vitamin D and tell the difference between water soluble versus fat soluble vitamins of course this will link into the chemistry of bonding and the different functional groups that we will see in these molecules so one of the key things that we need to look at in terms of food chemistry is this idea of nutrients because we're complex organisms we need a huge number of different molecules and building blocks to maintain the functions in our body this being building proteins metabolic processes getting energy those kinds of things all the things that we require in order for the healthy functioning of our body are referred to as nutrients micronutrients are things that we only need in very small amounts and this can be milligrams less than 0.05 percent of our body mass so we only need very small amounts in order to take these in and get what we need these micronutrients often work as cofactors of enzymes and include vitamins and some trace minerals so things like iron copper zinc and things like this these often form those metal centers in enzymes that have quaternary structures like hemoglobin and things like that so we need small amounts of these metals metal ions and various other vitamins to work as coenzymes and cofactors with our enzymes for metabolic processes the other group is known as macronutrients and these are ones that are required in large amounts so these are proteins fats and carbohydrates which when broken down form the monomers of the biopolymers we've been studying these will also bring with them more micronutrients and minerals so if we're drinking lots of dairy we're going to be getting lipids as well as carbohydrates but also a good amount of calcium so nutrients in the body have two main roles and this is that they can supply energy or control body processes our macronutrients which are our carbs lipids and proteins okay will tend to break down into energy but also proteins and things like that will allow for growth and repair of the body so largely it doesn't matter what we're taking in they're going to play one of these two roles that is either to supply energy or take part in a function of the body that is related to growth and repair or standard processes vitamins are classified as any organic compound that we require to survive okay so and as we mentioned before they are essential they're not synthesized by the organism that they are used by there's around 13 vitamins and you will see a lot of these are in multivitamin supplements that you can purchase the interesting thing that even though we classify a large number of things as vitamins they're not chemically related to each other and have no common structures so one vitamin is not linked to another vitamin by its chemical structure they have different chemical structures largely because they all have very different functions in the body the way we tend to classify vitamins comes down into whether or not they're water soluble or fat soluble and this is dependent on their structure and ultimately their polarity the difference in solubility comes down to the number of functional groups that can form hydrogen bonds with water so as I said we classify them as water soluble or fat soluble this solubility is important in terms of how they're transported and stored within the body fat soluble vitamins are stored in fatty tissues and the liver whereas water soluble vitamins aren't stored at all within the body they're basically transported around in the blood stored in the aqueous environment of our blood 
But as soon as they are passing through the waste systems of the body, they're going to be excreted. There's four fat soluble vitamins, okay, which are vitamin A, D, E, and K, and nine water soluble vitamins. One, many of them are, come under the vitamin B group. So as we said, water soluble vitamins, these are the C and all the B vitamins. So those nine are made up by your different B vitamins. When there is an excess of these vitamins, they are excreted through the urine. A, D, E, and K vitamins, however, are lipid soluble or fat soluble. These are large non-polar molecules. And when there's excess that isn't used up in our metabolic processes, they accumulate in fat stores. And if they're not used, that accumulation can lead to there being too much. And this can be toxic to our biological processes and result in disease. So vitamin D is non-polar. We can see the structure of vitamin D here, and this is actually in your data booklet as well. We can see that we have, it's largely hydrocarbon chains with some ring structures. There is only one hydroxyl functional group, which is going to limit the way in which it can interact in the aqueous environment. So this large hydrophobic non-polar molecule accumulates in lipids. It plays a role in absorption of micronutrients, including calcium, zinc, and iron and magnesium. Without enough vitamin D, these aren't up, don't have sufficient uptake in our body. So when you're talking about things like osteoporosis and needing high calcium levels, that needs to go along with vitamin D. If you're getting lots of calcium but not having enough vitamin D, that's not going to work because your bones aren't going to be able to uptake the calcium without vitamin D. Another non-polar fat-soluble vitamin is vitamin A. Again, we can see it only has one polar hydroxyl group and the rest of the molecule has a large non-polar hydrocarbon structure. This is retinol and it's most important in our vision. It plays a large role in skin health and tissue repair as well. And in our diet, we tend to see vitamin A turning up in dairy products, yellow vegetables such as apricots, rock melon, and things like that. K and E are the last two of our four fat-soluble vitamins. Again, we see these large hydrocarbon chains with little or no hydroxyls. There is one on vitamin E here, and there's actually only the two ketones present on vitamin K. So vitamin K is important in blood clotting. Vitamin E is an antioxidant and... Um, is found in oils and things like that. You'll notice that most moisturizers and topical skin creams contain a large amount of vitamin E as well. So now we're looking at our water soluble. One of the most common ones that you should be familiar with is vitamin C. And we know that vitamin C has a role to play in our immune system and acts as an antioxidant in our body. The water soluble vitamins have varying degrees of solubility remembering it's not a is soluble isn't soluble we have things that are more soluble than others and this depends on the number of hydroxyl functional groups that can form hydrogen bonds with water okay so we can see here that with vitamin c we only have the one ring we don't have a large hydrophobic chain and we actually have four polar hydroxyl groups which are going to be able to form hydrogen bonds with water and therefore it will be soluble. The structure for vitamin C, just like vitamin D, is provided in your data booklet. Vitamin C is important for the absorption of iron in our body and it's most abundant in fresh fruit and a deficiency in vitamin C can lead to scurvy. It acts as an antioxidant by reacting with damaging radicals. You don't need to know the whole idea of radicals, but radicals are species that have an unpaired electron. Okay, so if it's an antioxidant, it's going to be reducing the thing that it attaches to. Okay, so the action of vitamin C 
acts as a reducing agent and slowing down the damage. It provides electrons to free radicals, and it usually does this by binding as a cofactor to an enzyme where the enzyme catalyzes this reduction process, okay? So vitamin C is there to provide electrons, it being oxidized itself and altered, but the other substance being reduced. In terms of solubility, what does this mean for function? Vitamins, essentially their solubility has implications on the dietary requirements. As we mentioned, water-soluble vitamins are excreted by the body if they're not used, so they're not stored for a long period of time, which means that we need to be taking these in regularly rather than a large amount irregularly. So constant supply of fresh fruit and vegetables in order to get sufficient vitamin C. If we cook the food, then we tend to see a reduction in vitamin C in that food, especially if it's things like boiling or steaming. Fat-soluble vitamins, on the other hand, these vitamins can be stored in fatty tissues for long periods of time and then mobilized and used by the body when required. This means that if you eat far too many of the foods that contain these vitamins and they're not being used up, you can end up with hypervitaminosis, i.e. an overdose of vitamins, and the body doesn't easily dispose of them, so it leads to toxic effects and disease. As we said, Vika wants you to be able to compare, and this is a table from your textbook, and essentially you need to be able to compare the differences between water-soluble and fat-soluble in terms of their structure and bonding. If we look at vitamin C versus vitamin D, we can see that we have four, two, one, two, three, four hydroxyl groups that can form hydrogen bonds with polar water molecules. Vitamin D has only one hydroxyl with a large hydrophobic structure, so it will form dispersion forces with nonpolar molecules, and this will be a much greater influence than the hydrogen bonding. It, vitamin C is polar and soluble in water versus vitamin D we would describe as nonpolar and being fat soluble. This means that vitamin C is transported in the blood and excreted, whereas vitamin D will be stored in fatty tissue in the liver. Vitamin C is essential regularly through the diet. Vitamin D is one of the non-essential vitamins, and this is because vitamin D is synthesized when our skin is exposed to UV radiation. So this is why getting enough sunlight is important because it's synthesized from other molecules. You can actually get vitamin D from other food sources as well, but primarily we, we will see vitamin D being produced by exposure of UV in the skin. We can get vitamin C from any kind of fresh fruit, including pineapple, citrus fruits, mangoes, green leafy vegetables. Vitamin D, if it's not being synthesized in through the UV radiation in our skin, we can get this thing from fatty fishes, um, mushrooms, egg yolks, and milk. So just a reminder that we do see disease states in the body due to vitamin and mineral deficiency, not just excess vitamins. So if we have a deficiency in vitamin A, we will see loss of vision, remembering that vitamin A is retinol and affects our eyes. Our B group vitamins, such as B1, beriberi, which is a muscular disorder um, and results in atrophying of muscles. Vitamin C, scurvy, and because vitamin C is involved in wound healing, we see wounds taking longer to heal when people have scurvy. Vitamin D, the disease of deficiency of vitamin D is known as rickets, and the bones have a characteristic bent shape. Calcium, of course, bone and tooth decay, things such as osteoporosis. Iodine is required in order for good function of our thyroid. And of course, iron, which leads to anemia. So this is a quick summary of each of the vitamins that we've spoken about, which ones are fat soluble and water soluble, along with their sources and their functions. You don't need to memorize all of these, but you should have an idea, particularly about vitamin C and D. 
which the structures are given in your data booklet. So you won't need to memorize these structures. You do need to know which are fat and which are water and be able to apply this knowledge to other vitamins that might be shown in your exam questions. Okay, that's it from me for this video and I'll see you in class.